This lecture is entitled Inigo Jones and Palladianism in English Baroque Architecture, or there was a Baroque in England? Now, Inigo Jones, who you see here on the left, this is a portrait of Inigo Jones, was a really important figure in English architecture um, in the Baroque period, but also he had a lasting imp impact on the architecture of England. Now, I said here there was a Baroque in England because you may wonder what was going on in England at the time. Um, we're in the 17th century, right? So this is the 17th century, and you may associate this period in England with literature. And certainly literature was booming in England in the 17th century, and we really haven't looked at a lot of or really any painting in England, and a lot of the Netherlandish paintings that are famous from this period are actually of the English. So we know that in England, um, Flemish and Dutch paintings were very much admired and patronized. So Flemish and Dutch painting preferred. And in fact, this portrait of Inigo Jones is um, created from a copy, from copying um, a Flemish portrait of the artist. So in terms of painting, the, the Baroque in England really did rely heavily on Flemish and Dutch art to a large extent. But it's in architecture that the English Baroque really had its own voice. And just to get a sense of where we are in terms of English architecture at the time, let's take a look at an example of a building from the late 16th century. All right, so this building is Hardwick Hall. Hardwick Hall. And it's from the 1590s. And this is a, a pretty representative example of the prevailing style of English architecture before the contributions of Inigo Jones and other Baroque architects in England. And you can see it's kind of a combination of medieval and Renaissance styles. I mean, we have um, sort of this vertical emphasis that's a holdover from the medieval period, these towers. Um, and then it's got a, a few kind of contemporary updates, but there's nothing really obviously classical about this. So let's sort of put it this way. Nothing really classical going on in this building. And if you consider that this was the standard of English Baroque architecture, the contributions of Inigo Jones are all the more striking. So let's take a look at his most famous building now. Okay, so this is generally considered his most famous piece of architecture. And it's known as the Banqueting House. Banqueting House. And it is at Whitehall Palace. It's in London and it dates 1619 to 22. And keeping in mind the building we just looked at, Hardwick Hall, hopefully this will really jump out at you as a really, really classical looking building. And I think you can see right away, we've got all of the familiar classical elements. We have pilasters, we have engaged columns, we have strong horizontal entablatures, a pronounced cornice at the top. We even have these sculptural classical garlands up at the top. So right away, immediately identifiable as a very classical building. And this is no accident as Inigo Jones was one of the first English architects who traveled to Italy. Uh, so he saw classical art in its home location and was really influenced by 
the classical architecture he saw there, uh, particularly the work of one Italian Renaissance architect, and that architect is Palladio. And that is where we get the term Palladianism, which I mentioned at the beginning, Palladianism. So he was working very much in the style of Palladio, this architect that he really admired. So let's take a look at this building next to one of Palladio's most famous buildings. Okay, so here on the left again we have the banqueting house. Um, and which I should mention, by the way, was part of a palace and it was an important center for royalty. It wasn't just for banquets, it was a reception hall. Uh, there were entertainments performed there, so it was an important public space um, central to the royal court. So the image on the right here is by Palladio, and it's in the town of Vicenza in Italy, and it's known as the Palazzo Chiaricati, and you don't need to remember the name of that, but just know that it was a palace in Italy, and it dates from the second half of the 16th century. So I think you can see immediately some real similarities between these two buildings. There's this two-story building with a very strong uh, dividing entablature across the center uh, and a strong emphasis on the roof line. In Inigo Jones's, it's this um, balustrade and in Palladio's it's these sculptural features along the roof line. Um, notice this up here and in Inigo Jones's roof line it's very similar to the railing along um, the entablature in Palladio's. We have alternating um, pointed and curved elements um, in t on top of the windows here in Inigo Jones. Same thing going on in Palladio right here. Um, so clearly very specific things borrowed from Palladio um, as well as just this overall sense of balance and harmony that you might associate with um, Renaissance Ita Italy and re architecture of the Italian Renaissance. So Inigo Jones then, and again consider this keeping in mind what was the prevailing style before Inigo Jones, he is really providing a new spark, a uh, spark of something new to English architecture. And that spark would really continue with other English Baroque architects, um, most notably Christopher Wren, Sir Christopher Wren, who's the most famous English Baroque architect. And you'll be learning more about him in the next subunit.